Wow, it's truly beautiful. Hello, I'm Wang Tigong. Today is our fourth day trekking the Xiata North Route. Speaking of the Xiata North Route, many outdoor enthusiasts might not be familiar with it yet. But if I mention the Xiata Ancient Trail, I'm sure a lot of outdoor lovers have heard of it. Some sections of the Jata Ancient Trail overlap with the Jata North Route, but there are also many parts that are different with completely distinct scenery. Speaking of the Xiata Ancient Trail, you might not know that its exit from the mountains is called Aksu. Because Aksu shares a border with Kazakhstan, the area has now been closed off by the government. For this reason, many new routes have recently emerged in Xinjiang, and they are definitely worth checking out. Actually, I had a chance to hike the Tianxia North-South route in Xinjiang last year, but that route takes even longer, and uh, because of work, I missed out on it. But this time, coming to the Xiata North route, I feel it was truly worth the trip. Especially when I crossed the first checkpoint, what caught my eye on the left was a majestic range of snow-capped mountains. If I had to describe it in one word, calling it a fairyland would not be an exaggeration at all. This is my first time hiking in Xinjiang, but I have trekked many trails in western Sichuan and Yunnan before, so I'd like to share my personal feelings about western Sichuan and Xinjiang. I think the beauty of western Sichuan is a kind of striking, majestic, beautiful example, Gonga Mountain and Yangmei Peak. They soar high into the clouds, truly awe-inspiring. But the mountains here in Xinjiang give me a sense of dreamlike beauty, as if they belong in a fantasy. So I hope that whether you're friends from China or from abroad, if you have the chance, you can come to China and experience the magnificent landscapes of Xinjiang. Taking this opportunity, I'd also like to share some of the situations I encountered while camping here yesterday. First, let me share some of my personal feelings. Back in 2015, when I went to Japan for a study tour, I saw many small outdoor shops. The owners or staff of those physical stores were all extremely dedicated, especially those working in gear shops. Every time we went into a store to ask about the gear, the owner or staff would patiently explain the functions of the equipment to us, no matter how many questions we had. Almost every shop had a bookshelf at the entrance displaying all kinds of books about outdoors and equipment so that everyone could learn more specifically about outdoor gear. Later, when I visited the Munich Outdoor Show in Germany, I also stopped by some small shops and had the same experience. I think this is the purpose of physical outdoor stores. Unfortunately, these days, it's rare to see outdoor shops in China especially in first and second tier cities commerce has fragmented many of them. Actually, I truly think that the existence of physical outdoor stores is really quite necessary, especially for people who genuinely love the outdoors as they provide an excellent way to learn more about outdoor gear and equipment. But uh, it's very hard to find the right balance. So I believe that uh, the business model of physical outdoor stores in places like Japan or Europe is really worth learning from. If we focus too much on developing e-commerce without achieving a good balance between physical businesses and e-commerce, it will cause significant distortions in some business sectors. Having finished uh, discussing the previous two topics, next I want to talk about some situations I encountered while camping here yesterday. Because after I arrived at the campsite yesterday, it happened to be raining, and uh, the rain was quite heavy, so I had to set up my tent quickly. That's why you saw the state I was in while pitching the tent yesterday. It took about five minutes to set up the tent. It rained all night yesterday. When I got up this morning, I saw that there were droplets of water uh, on the inside of the inner tent and also on the inside of the outer tent. This is what we call condensation. So how do we tell whether a tent is leaking or if it's just condensation? First, we need to observe that if it's leaking, water will usually drip continuously from one or several specific points. In that case, 
the tent is probably leaking. If we notice the inside of the outer or inner tent is evenly covered with droplets of water, then that's condensation. First, let's understand how this physical phenomenon of condensation occurs. For example, if you've driven in the rain, or if you're someone from a northern region with heating at home during winter, your windows often get frosted over. This is all due to the temperature difference between the outside and the inside creating such a phenomenon. The same logic applies to tents. Yesterday, because it rained heavily, and the evening was shrouded in thick fog with not a breath of wind. This kind of condition makes it easy for condensation to form. Condensation occurs because when we're inside the tent, the heat from our bodies or moisture from our breath doesn't dissipate well. Combined with the temperature difference between inside and outside, this creates convection and with the pressure from rain and fog leads to condensation. As you saw, I showed how I deal with condensation inside the tent, which you can use as a reference. Once condensation uh, forms, as long as we don't shake the tent, the condensation usually won't drip down, so it won't affect our sleep inside the tent. Condensation mainly evaporates through the movement of wind or by exposure to direct sunlight. But unfortunately, the specific weather conditions we experienced yesterday simply didn't allow for that process to occur, which is exactly why we ended up experiencing condensation inside the tent. However, it really doesn't affect our outdoor life or enjoyment. Since we've come out into nature, we have to accept it. This is also a part of the authentic outdoor living experience and something we learn to embrace. Why am I sharing this topic today? It's because I think it's very important for beginners who are new to outdoor hiking and camping to understand this kind of physical phenomenon or natural condition. So please don't let these small minor issues or inconveniences bother you at all. They really won't stop us from fully enjoying the beautiful, breathtaking outdoor scenery that surrounds us. All right, that's all for today's brief and simple sharing. Now, we're gonna slowly pack up all of our gear and equipment and get ourselves ready to set off and continue our wonderful journey on day four. Bye-bye. If you pack them separately, taking out the tent poles and ground sheet compresses space further, 